Hi, this is Dana Arcuri, author, speaker, and wellness advocate, and today's topic is quite intriguing. I will share my own story, but let's get straight to it. So today I'm talking about heal physical and emotional pain, and I am speaking about the body and mind connection. So we are not just a body and not just a mind and not just you know separate parts. We are whole whole human beings and so there is a connection with the body and the mind in regard to all forms of medical conditions all forms of mental health and the list is quite long because our world has an epidemic of chronic pain whether it's joint pain knee pain shoulder pain back pain any kind of autoimmune conditions such as fibromyalgia, people who have IBS and all kind of um, gastrointestinal dysfunction and all kind of gut health problems, problems with brain fog, problems with insomnia, problems with mood swings. There could be migraines, there could be tendinitis, frozen shoulder. Hey, our world is suffering and today I want to give you some hope there is some natural ways to heal and I have come full circle people I am like just in awe in awe that I have tripped upon something that I was on to 11 years ago now isn't it amazing that we could start on a certain healing journey kind of get sidetracked you know how it goes people boy those benzos sidetracked me all right I was on so many medications that it sidetracked and sabotaged my healing journey but thankfully I'm eight years free of medication and I have really been transformed in so many different ways um, when I look at where I was 11 years ago in 2008 to where I am today which is June 2019 hey I've come a long way baby just like that commercial come a long way baby oh yes so let me share with you a little backstory on what I tripped upon 11 years ago and then what happened recently that brought me full circle back to where I was in that healing journey okay so in March 2008, I was officially diagnosed with not only advanced degenerative disc disease, many herniated discs, uh, scoliosis, thyroid dysfunction. I mean, the thyroid problems are still existing all over the place, people, and unresolved. And then I was diagnosed also with fibromyalgia because there's really no medical testing to confirm fibromyalgia and therefore a lot of physicians may do blood work and various testing and rule out other conditions and then there's nothing left except fibromyalgia so I thought to myself back in 2008 I don't want to start medicine I'd really prefer something more natural and something that I could do on my own without Western medicine which led me onto a pathway where my aunt Sue shared with me her healing journey of fibromyalgia and she shared with me that many 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 years ago she came upon a book by Dr. John Sarno Sarno is spelled S as in Sam, A-R-N-O. Dr. John Sarno, you're gonna wanna check him out, people. Okay, so my aunt shared with me that she started reading Dr. John Sarno's book called Healing Back Pain, The Body and Mind Connection. And then she started reading other books of his. One thing led to another, she ends up having a major breakthrough and is healed from fibromyalgia so she said to me back way back when 11 years ago Dana you need to read the book by John Sarno there is a body and mind connection start looking into 
any of your childhood experiences, any form of trauma, abuse, neglect, hurts and pains and frustrations, maybe a little hidden anger somewhere along the line in those childhood years, and start connecting the dots to your present time. And so she gave me a lot to think about and I immediately started reading Dr. John Sarno's book about healing back pain, the body and mind connection. So I read that book and ordered the next book, which was called The Mind Body Prescription. And it was just amazing to read this brilliant book with such amazing statistics of true people who have suffered. Okay, so these patients have everything under the sun. They have a lot of back pain. They have a lot of algas, whatever kind of pain condition you could come up with. Neuralgia, fibromyalgia. I mean, there's just so many autoimmune conditions and so many pain conditions, especially with the spine and the discs and nervous system and the central nervous system that we have to start wondering why aren't people getting better with medicine? Why aren't people getting better with surgery? Why aren't patients having a reduction in their pain levels and their dis disabling sy symptoms, you know? Hey, so this was really wild that I had heard about Dr. Sarno. I started reading about his, his theories on this mind-body connection. And then I started to try to process how this could really change my life. It led me on a journey of revisiting old child abuse from when I was a toddler and was abused by a babysitter, which led me to therapy, which led me to then read about repressed emotions. But long story short, we'll keep this part short, my, fi my family silenced me, you know. Basically, when someone wants to bring up abuse in a family, a lot of times people will blame them, shame them, silence them. The dysfunction and toxicity could be very serious in which the victim of this abuse, which is trauma, decides to lay low not talk about it because they're being silenced, they're uh, being gas, the whole gaslighting, the whole flying monkeys, the shame game, the blame game, lots of toxic actions and manipulations and unfortunate events can unfold when people do break the silence. So for another 12 years, I remained silent. I somehow lost track of the vision of the body and mind connection. I was then prescribed some Balta, which led to benzodiazepines, which led to gabapentin, and on and on it went, and my life unraveled. I got stuck in the healing journey, and maybe you are there right now. Maybe right now you're stuck too. Maybe you're going through wicked withdrawals. Maybe you had surgery and it's unsuccessful. Maybe you're in therapy right now and you're kind of questioning, mm, it's not really working, I don't feel a whole lot better. What's going on? Okay, we're all human. We all have these hard rock moments when we start awakening to the truth. We start awakening to past trauma. We start taking a good hard look at some of the messy places we have been in our lives, such as for me, statutory rape when I was 15 years old. When I was 42 years old, I was sexually assaulted by my sister's husband. These are all trauma, very traumatic events. And again, family shaming, family silencing, manipulation, flying monkeys, a lot of gaslighting, a lot of retaliation. You know, and, and, and on and on the story goes. But here I am, full circle. Here I am, all these years later, saying, time's up on being silenced. Time's up on chronic pain. And time is up on allowing other people and events and tragedies and losses and different things that occurred in our lives to hold us hostage. If there's nothing else you gain from this video today, I hope you gain that there's freedom, 
from your chronic pain and we're talking physical pain we're talking emotional pain we're talking deep rooted trauma and so I started reading a new book by my friend Don Shatterly who wrote hope and possibilities through trauma so I'm reading this book and I come upon him talking about John Sarno's so there's John Sarno's the doctor who I had read several of his books I had wonderful breakthroughs with identifying my past abuse and trauma with seeking therapy with seeking um, ways to work through those old repressed deep dark emotions that were kind of laying low you know what I mean people our body protects itself you see when we're in fight or flight and we're in the middle of a rape a car accident a tragedy some kind of physical assault might be even a crime like a home invasion we go into fight and flight and our body protects itself so our brain is so wise our brain wants to protect us and our body and so sometimes it will repress those hard scary out of control emotions the kind that says I'm so scared I'm so fearful I feel so helpless I feel so vulnerable holy shit what's happening to me and your body goes into fight flight and freeze and you may not be even aware of these unconscious emotions that are trapped in every cell within your body don't just take my word for it start reading and hearing and learning about the mind body connection but let's move forward with what happened so I decided to start checking out again Dr. John Sarno and the body mind connection which then opened up another door pure brilliance people I just love how this works it's like you know divine interventions and divine appointments where you meet or you learn about or you hear about or you somehow connect with someone online who is there to help you to open up new doors of healing and recovery and that led me to Nicole Sachs and that's spelled S as in Sam A C H S Nicole Sachs who is a licensed social worker she is really amazing because her story begins where she was down and out at 19 she had this horrendous injury and accident and all kind of things going on with her back and it was a hopeless situation and she was only 19 and her life came to a screeching halt and out of desperation when the medicine failed when the therapies failed when everything else failed and all she could see was an MRI showing she had a bad back she had a messed up spine and she had a lot of problems she found Dr. John Sarno online started reading his book about the body mind connection and lo and behold she experienced a medical miracle and was healed it was such a brilliant moment it was such a life-changing miraculous um transformation to go from can't move can't walk can't even drive in a car can't have kids can't have you know she couldn't have any form of pregnancy because they told her she would never be able to give birth to children well let me tell you people she has five kids now she is a wonderful therapist she has a book out that I am reading so let me find her book here it is called the meaning of truth embrace your truth create your life and once again I'm speaking about Nicole Sachs she's a psychotherapist she writes about Dr. John Sarno's and how he literally saved her life and healed her and then she went onward became a licensed psychotherapist therapist and is now helping thousands and thousands of people in which I tripped upon her her book and the one called again called excuse me the meaning of truth embrace the truth create your life you can find it on amazon.com she's also on Facebook and private groups for people looking for this mind-body connection 
In the meanwhile, I start really getting into this whole mind body thing, you know, and I'm fully aware, fully aware that every cell in our body is literally holding old repressed emotions. We're talking old anger, rage, frustration, shame, blame, guilt, um, feelings of not being enough, feelings of being inadequate. And it is just something that we have to come to understand that many of us have been brought up in a generation. So it's not just my generation, like the generation before me and the generation after me. We're brought up to think this. We're told as children, don't cry. You're a big girl. You're a big boy. You're going to be brave. You're not going to cry. We're told, be strong. Don't be so sensitive. You need to get thicker skin. You need to just get over it. And so oftentimes it's ingrained in us from a very, very young age that we are to not show emotions. We are not even permitted. Many of us, our families, and we're speaking our mothers, our fathers, maybe grandparents, maybe aunts, uncles, maybe even our older siblings silenced us. They shamed us. They told us to be quiet. And there may have been even like a silent code. It was nonverbal, but it's a silent code that you are not allowed to speak truth. You are not allowed to share your authentic emotions. And it is unacceptable within that family to share what's really going on. And so you learn at a young age. I mean, for some people it might be two and three years old. Other people it might be five and six. Others it might be when you're much older. You get the point. We start stuffing our emotions because we're told that society won't let us feel what we feel. So if we were on the playground and we're being pushed around and bullied and we're told you're fat or you're ugly or you're stupid or whatever, hey, you know how kids are. You know how kids are on the playground. I know that you know. The point is we learn. It's instilled in us at such a young age to silence our emotions, to not express when we're sad, when we're grieving, when we're disappointed, when we're confused, when we're lost, when we're depressed, when we're outraged that something terrible and tragic happened to us. And yet, and yet how often this is something that's so legitimate. I mean, the person who was abused when they were only two years old, the person who was raped, the person who was assaulted in a crime, the person who was harmed, the person who was endangered. You have every right to be outraged, but yet, shh, we're told to keep it quiet. We're told to not talk about it. We're told to just suck it up, be brave, get over it. But I'm here to say today that that's not what Dr. Sarno says and that's not what Nicole Sachs teaches or what many other body mind professionals share, teach, and promote. And what I'm learning is that there is so much benefit in allowing ourselves to finally wake up, be real with ourselves and our past and our pain and start taking a good look at things that happened to us and the tragedies that we faced and the accidents we were in and the traumas that we experienced and any forms of assault, whether it was physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. There's a lot of things too within the Christian community. As Christians, how often do we hear you're going to be a good Christian, you're just not going to talk about it. You're going to be a good Christian and you're just going to forgive. You're just going to be a good Christian and you're going to look the other way. And so often religion can use verses and scriptures and false doctrine to silence us in which we're not speaking our truth, we're not sharing what's really happening. We're denying ourselves our legitimate emotions for concerns 
that are extremely important and that have this major, major influence upon our lives. And we're talking body, mind, and soul. And so we have to reach a point where we understand that how we feel today physically. So if we have aches and we have pains and we have a migraine and we might have a neck injury, a back injury, all kind of arthritis, we might have insomnia, we might have anxiety, depression, panic attacks, you get the picture. The bottom line is that underlying every single physical and emotional symptom, it's actually our inner voice screaming out for attention. Our brain is so wise. Our brain just wants to protect us, especially when we were children and endured such horrific experiences. And even as adults, we experience some quite traumatic nightmares. I mean, even when I think about my benzodiazepine nightmare, I mean, we're talking hell on earth, people. Withdrawals, years and years and years, I couldn't function. I couldn't leave my home. I couldn't leave my bedroom. We're talking major trauma from prescribed harm from doctors. So we have to understand that it is going to manifest itself on our body, okay? So this whole thing, they're saying fibromyalgia, all these, all these trigger points and all this pain, let's rethink this. Could it really be that fibromyalgia is just manifesting itself from something that happened earlier in life? Say, mm, abuse from my babysitter? say statutory rape? How about other things that happened to me? Different things that may have come down in my life that were quite negative. And it doesn't have to be something huge in your life and it doesn't have to be some huge trauma. And you know, maybe you weren't abused. Maybe you never went through any kind of rape or violence or any form of heavy duty trauma. That doesn't mean you're discluded from this because there are plenty of people who had a pretty basic life, nothing too major, and yet they are battling migraines. They are battling back pain. They are battling depression, insomnia, brain fog, irritable bowel syndrome, so many different things, heart palpitations, high blood pressure. There's just a lot that our world is dealing with and we have to understand, and conventional medicine, they don't really always talk about how our physical conditions are greatly influenced by emotional things that happen to us. There are a lot of different theories on this, but I really believe 100% that Dr. John Sarno of the amazing body mind connection is right on point. I mean, I'm talking 100% on point. I totally believe in it. And I think that what I want to end with is that this journey is showing me so much. It's showing me for one, that it's okay now to start allowing myself and giving myself permission to go into those dark places of the past that I didn't feel comfortable talking about. And I could, on my own, by myself, journal through various events. And now let's understand about Nicole Sachs' idea of journaling. It's called journal speak. She doesn't mean journaling like a typical journal. Oh no, no, this one's different. What you're going to do is consider yourself no longer an adult. See, an adult, you're going to be like, oh, I should just, you know, not try to be upset and I should just, you know, breathe through it and I'm going to be kind to myself and I'm going to let go of my pain and I'm just going to be an adult and be the bigger person. No, that doesn't cut it. Instead, she has a theory that we need to allow ourselves to become that little toddler that was ticked off, that was mad. It's okay to have a little toddler temper tantrum. And instead, this is what your journal is going to sound like. And this is just an example. Your journal could sound like this. And understand it's only for your eyes only. 
and it could be ripped up, it could be torn up, it could be deleted if it's online. Don't save the document, delete it. This is just between you and only you because it's for your healing. So here it is. This is an example. Holy shit, I can't believe what he did to me. I can't believe how this monster took advantage of me. This person just threw himself on me. He just absolutely ticked me off. I'm enraged. I am in so enraged. Why did he do this to me? How could he do this to me? He is an absolute monster. He is a despicable person. I am so angry. I am so frustrated. I am so humiliated. I am so freaking upset. Okay, you get the point. Boy, oh boy, I, maybe I should get into acting. Anyways, you get the picture that you let loose. You let loose on that paper when you journal. You let loose on whether you're typing it out, whether you're using any kind of notes, like on iPhones, you could write notes, or you could be on your iPad, or you could be on your computer, laptop. You just journal. And here's the thing. It's daily, because let's be honest, when we start doing things daily, they claim we have to do something for at least 28 days, excuse me, 21 days for it to even stick. So there's a theory that we have to repetitively, consistently do the same thing, say like exercise. You have to every day, watch what you eat, every day, exercise, every day, okay? Same idea, but this is journaling. This is journal speak. This is not being the nice, polite adult and a good Christian. No, this is being the enraged toddler, the ticked off elementary student who just got bullied on the playground and you are gonna just blast your journal with all of your emotions. You could swear, you could cuss, you could yell, you could scream. You're gonna go through and you're gonna release all of those negative emotions. You could talk about how you were embarrassed, you were publicly humiliated, you were disgusted, you were hurt, you were so grieved, you were so grieved. You could talk about you lost your pet, you're so sad, you don't know how you're gonna go on without them. They were your world, they were your life, they were like your baby, and now your pet's gone and you're feeling sad, and then you're mad, you're so mad. Why didn't the doctor help? Why didn't the vet help? And so you work through this, you work through this, and it'll take you on a journey because what happens is after you start really venting and letting loose with this journal speak, you get to a place where things start clicking. All of a sudden you have new memories. All of a sudden you remember new things. You're able then to uncover repressed emotions, to release old trauma, to let go of anger and all these negative emotions that were just stuck just stuck and now you're able to start releasing and working through this junk. I mean, that's what it feels like, but yet there's beauty on the other side. And so I am on this journey. If you wanna start following me, you can. If you wanna start watching and hearing what I have to say as I do my journal speak, as I move forward with both the Nicole Sachs and Dr. John Sarnos, and also I'm reading a book Here's the book right here. And this one's called Your Body Speaks Your Mind. Oh boy, you're, trust me, your body's speaking your mind. You know how that headache screaming? Oh yeah. You know how your neck hurts bad and your shoulder is on fire? Oh, it's trying to get your attention. It is trying to get your attention. And so this, Deb Shapiro from Your Body Speaks Your Mind. Here we go. Decoding the emotional, psychological, and spiritual messages that underlies illness, underlies illness. And so we can understand that many of us have gone through a whole lot of stuff and some of it is very, very painful and it's very, very hard and it's very, very traumatic. But we can understand that there is hope for healing without medication, without surgery, without all these unbelievable, expensive alternatives. Instead, we could start tapping into those hidden emotions, those suppressed 
emotions and start journaling our way through to healing. Stay tuned. I'll share more videos about how this is working for me. And the meanwhile, talk to me about your thoughts on the body-mind connection. Have you ever practiced or heard of Dr. John Cernos? Body Mind Connection, any of his books, let me know. Also, if you know anything about Nicole Sachs and have had some wonderful breakthroughs with her book and her theory, feel free to share. And you could go to DanaOrCurie.com. Thanks and have an awesome day.